<laughs> it's a little bright the way we're recording this right now, but I'm hoping that once we get the editor on YouTube to adjust some of the brightness, then maybe it won't look so bad or so bright or so washed out. We'll see. But for now, what were you thinking? Or what do you expect? What did you expect? Today we're looking at those questions because we're asking in Thinking 911, what kind of thinking are you doing? I mean, what did you expect? When we talk about the end of the world, a lot of people will say, oh, well, the end of the world is coming and they'll tell you about disasters or you know cataclysms or things happening in the world and they kind of expect that to happen to them. But when you listen to some of the pastors teaching or some of the people preaching or some of the things that are going on in social media, I have to ask you, were you doing any thinking at all? I mean, if we say that we know that the end of the world is coming, what are you expecting? Some great revival? That's not going to happen. Are you expecting, you know, that God is going to send a limo and, you know, personally invite you to take a ride to heaven, you know, with your personalized, you know, chauffeur? That ain't going to happen. Did you think that somehow it's going to get easier before the soon return of the king? That somehow you were going to have, you know, all wisdom and knowledge and understanding and that it was going to be thousands and billions and millions of people that are going to get raptured or taken away or snatched away from the coming worldwide deception that's going on even now. I got news for you. There aren't that many people going to get raptured. <laughs> I know, you know, that may be the horse you rode in on, but I got something to tell you. Some good news and some bad news. The good news is two shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Two shall be asleep in bed. One shall be taken, the other left. There will be two walking or two talking or two together and one shall be taken and the other left. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. Two shall be in bed. One shall be taken and the other left. Uh, are you beginning to get the picture here? I mean, dare I say, the good news is also the bad news because that's not everybody. Even if you were going to use the most liberal, quote unquote, mathematical equation possible, then just by one scripture alone, just one scripture, I mean only one scripture, let me tell you again, one, going once, going twice, sold on one scripture. The bottom line is, using just one scripture, that's only 50% of those that were looking for his return or those that are calling themselves Christian. I'll admit, you know, a few years back, you know, give it, oh, I don't know, maybe four, five, okay, ten years ago, because um, that's about when the, the latest, you know, greatest uh, population kind of evaluation, you know, where we have those uh, census go on. There was a time when America was considered to be 80% claimed to be Christian. It's gone down to about 69%, you know, so 69% of them. Now, we could take 69% of the world and then try to figure out how many Christians there are in the world because there's over 7 billion people in the world. And contrary to all our great evangelism numbers, by the way, you know, 10,000 people came forward last night, so we got to add 10 more, you know, to that number that's Christian. You sure about that? What are they doing on Monday after they've gone to a revival meeting on Sunday? I mean, I got news for you that um, some of these places that, you know, we're talking about overseas. Uh, honey, I didn't grow up yesterday, but you know what? When they got these big, giant revival meetings going on, I've seen some of the people come out of there and go right to the bar, you know. Sorry, it isn't quite what you think it is. Just because someone professes, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean Jesus says, come on in. Water's fine. Matter of fact, I think Jesus had something to say about those who say, Lord, Lord, 
haven't we done all these things in your name? And they'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. For when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me to eat or to drink. You know, I myself, I found myself very convicted. I, I really do. I mean, when I listen to Keith Green's song about, you know, the prodigal or about, you know, some of these people about did we feed them, did we shelter them, did we clothe I personally feel very, you know, bad because I haven't had really as much money as I'd like to have to have done those things. And I still haven't done those things to the degree I want to. You know, I don't, believe me, there are a lot of things I won't pay money though and, you know, donate money to because, frankly, I've seen humanitarian aid organizations I worked in. I see the money come in and I see what goes out and I go, Uh huh, and somebody's making money off of some of the money going in and going out. Now I'm not opposed to some, you know, kind of like you know, got to make a living kind of routine going on, but I don't know about if I'm going to give you any money to make a living off of what little bit of money I have. So when Jesus said, "Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord," I think he was talking about the reality of what are we doing with what we say we believe in? In other words, he's talking about the hypocrisy of people claiming that Jesus is Lord when in reality Jesus said, me being your Lord, why aren't you doing the things I said? And the things he said were, first and foremost, the Sermon on the Mount. Matter of fact, first, last, and always, the things he said are the Sermon on the Mount. Matter of fact, if you want to know what Jesus said, it's the Sermon on the Mount. How many times do I have to say Sermon on the Mount before you get it? Jesus never called it the Sermon on the Mount. Man did so that they would say, well, this is just one of his sermons. No, it's not. These are the sayings of mine. This is what I stand for. As a matter of fact, from a Jewish perspective, a rabbi would have to declare where he was coming from and what he believed in and what he was talking about. Because in order for a rabbi to have followers, he had to have all these different people understand what his doctrine was or his dogma. You know, his... Um, his school of thought, his framing of his mind, you know, the kind of like school of Gamaliel, you know, school of Hillel. This is called the school of Jesus. Hello, um, lawgiver, you know, son of God, son of man. Hey, listen to my son. This is whom I'm well pleased. He said, these are my sayings. These are my statements. This is my statement of belief. I believe in, you know, God the Father and the Son the Holy Spirit. No. What Jesus said is what we believe in. So, I get that Paul was giving you some good advice about some of the things that he said later on in the letters to the churches, you know, and later on to, you know, different places that he'd gone to because he was dealing with Gentiles that didn't know anything about Jesus or about God. They knew a lot about, you know, other gods and, you know, partying and, you know, not really living very kosher, but he had to deal with what he was tempted to do. And so a lot of misunderstanding goes on when you read some of Paul's letters, you know, I mean, some people become legalists, some people become gracious, you know, I mean, they, they take grace to the place where they can abuse it and confuse it and use it. That's not what Jesus said. So, when I talk about the end of the world, which I do a lot, by golly, it's the end of the world, <laughs> yup, 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 oh, yup, yup. No, when I talk about the end of the world, I want to know, what did you expect? I mean, you should be expecting there to be fewer believers, fewer people following what maybe Chuck Smith said. Chuck Smith didn't just say, hey, we do the Bible simply. The Bible simply, you know, we teach the Bible and teach the Bible simply. We teach the Bible and teach the Bible simply. That's not what he said. That was one of the expressions he used. There were a lot of things Chuck said. Jesus is coming sooner than you think. Jesus is coming soon is what he was said. And he preached a lot about Jesus is coming. He preached a lot about, you know, the Bible. And he preached a lot about these set sermons that he had that were pretty good. But he also taught a lot of things about the Holy Spirit. About being led by the Spirit of God. About his church not being his, but being the Lord's church. Funny how that doesn't get communicated now. You know, there's... Recently, I came out of kind of retirement on Facebook because I wasn't posting because some Calvary Chapel pastor decided to take a cheap shot at Brian Broderson, who's deciding to, you know, follow the Lord and the Spirit of God with what he's being told to do. Took a shot at him and said, hey, you know what, you know, it's split up and, you know, he's trying to create the vision. 
man, I went after that guy with full guns and, you know, bang, bang, you know, gotcha. <laughs> no, he was accusing the brethren. He was quoting some bad blog with bad facts that were false, that had already been rebuked and repudiated and already been stated, and yet he's dating them again to bring up some controversy because he's bored, doesn't have a message to give. Because, frankly, he has become a partner with the spirit of Antichrist. That's gone out into the world. The spirit of Antichrist is pretty easy to see. You know, it's like anything that's violent, spirit of Antichrist. Anything that's like, you know, accuser of the brethren, spirit of Antichrist. Um, you know, less love, oh yeah. You know, anti-peace, oh yeah. You know, stir up trouble, yeah, controversy, yeah, division, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Spirit of Antichrist. But what did you expect? We were told, we were taught, we were warned. It's not some great revival coming. We had it. That was the Jesus movement. Now it's the falling away. The falling away, the political maneuverings, people being less leadership-like, being more carnal, being more or less influenced by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God pulling back, the waning of the Holy Spirit, being that he would no longer strive or we wouldn't constantly strive with man. He would not be there to be our restrainer that evil would begin to become more obvious, that corruption would begin to become more evident, that children would rebel against their parents, that lawlessness would increase, that there would be that maintenance of the spirit of the Antichrist going about and causing people to be pushed back and stay back and not win arguments and fights and battles and do all these crazy things they think they gotta do in the name of Jesus to conquer in the name of God, but that they would lose miserably and embarrass really the reality of what God is saying, my kingdom is not of this world. So what I'm asking you is, what did you expect? You know, I mean, come on. Lollipops, a little rubber stamp so that, you know, you said, hey, I did my duty so God, you know, stamp me on the forehead and let me come to heaven. No, suffer, sucker. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's what he said. Jesus said, hey, if they've done this to the master, what do you think they're gonna do to you? So what do you expect? What do you think they're going to do to you? Your persecution of being supposedly persecuted in America, when you say, oh, well, you know, we had a hard time with the building permit, you know, man, they were persecuting us. Oh, it was Satan. We had to rebuke Satan. That ain't Satan. That's your neighbor saying, look, we don't want another church here. Or we want parking, you know, because I've seen Calvary chapels do it. I've seen other churches do it where they'll throw a church together. They won't take care of their neighbors. They'll go ahead and pave over the parking lot, you know, and have cars parked all over the wrong places doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So really, being that it's the end of the world and the end has come and that Jesus is coming sooner than you think, he's right around the corner, he's knocking at the door, what do you expect the world to be like? Happy? Excited? No, twice as bad as you ever thought it would be. Getting worse all the time. Oh, not in the way you think. You know, like, oh, well, you know, of course those, you know, homosexuals and those gays and, you know, those uh, uh, racists and those other people, you know, that's different. Those are human beings. That's the ones we're supposed to be witnessing to more so at the end of the day. No, it's the Christians that are getting worse. I got news for you. God isn't, like, stopping salvation at all, but rather God has removed that protection for the church that the gates of hell are going to come against the church. The persecution is spiritual. It's going to be something to tempt you, to divert you, to distract you from being about what? What Jesus said to do. Love, joy, peace, meekness, kindness, temperance, gentleness, all these other things. But also more so, saving the ungodly. I mean, come on now. I mean, you got some guy that gets selected, you know, and he says, I'm a Christian. You know, I go to church on Sunday. So what would you get out of the message today? Nothing. That's a Christian? I don't think so. You know, I'm going to build a wall to keep them away from us, you know, and it's all about us, not about them, you know. That's a Christian? I got news for you. Christianity sold out in their elections. You know, I mean, frankly, I believe that if Christians prayed about it, they would have been told, get out of politics, not just don't vote, but stay out of politics. Get involved in the preaching of the gospel. Nowhere does it say, Go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and sign them up as a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent and teach them to vote. 
and teach them to do their military duty and serve and kill in the name of God. What did you expect when Jesus said these things? Love your enemies. What do you expect that to mean? I mean, if you expect that to mean that you can go out and kill, I got nothing to tell you. Go do it. See how that works with you in heaven. God help you because you're not going to make it. If you really think that God somehow has given you license to carry a gun and shoot someone, defending yourself is not a Christian virtue and it is not a legality and it is not anything that is a spiritual truth that God said you could do. You can pretend that you know you get your you know uh, religious idea from Paul, but guess what? That's not what Jesus said. When you stand before Jesus, Paul's not going to be behind him going, Lord, uh, you got to let this one in because after all, I did tell them to defend themselves. Jesus is going to look at you right in the eye and say, did you love your enemy? Did you? Or did you shoot them? Because if you shot them, you shot me. If you protected yourself against them, you protected yourself against me. Don't care if you believe it. Frankly, go to hell. <laughs> you don't expect a preacher to say that, do you? Hey, go to hell. I don't care. Man. It's your choice. What did you expect? You expect somebody to come up and coddle, coddle you when it's the end of the world? No, I got news for you. It could happen right now, today, January 2nd, 2017. Anytime from 2017 onward to 2022, the latest dates being 2034 possibly, but 2017 to 2022. Hey, man. Lord, take me. I'm ready. I'm yours. I mean, whatever needs to get done, get done with it. Get over it and get on with it because it ain't going to be here for you to fix, straighten up, or somehow learn it along the way. No, I got news for you today. What did you expect when you called upon the name of the Lord to be saved and chose this word Christ-like to be like Jesus? You'd have to die for your faith. So, again, I have to ask you, what did you expect? Candy bars? Sodas? You know, brownie button? Uh-uh, that's not the way it works. I'm sorry, but when it comes to following Jesus, Jesus said, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. So really, when it comes to the end of the world, what did you expect?